Hello, my name is Gad Mayer Lev, co author of the article Intravascular Chemotherapy and Chemohypothermia in Non Muscle Invasive Bladder Cancer An Overview on Drug Administration Techniques and Pharmacokinetics. I feel privileged to have written this with some respectable key opinion leaders. Too few people know that bladder cancer is one of the most common cancers, ranked fourth in men, and it is the most expensive to treat from diagnosis to patient death. I personally see great importance in the timing of this article. New devices, drugs and protocols are constantly being researched and there are times, like now, when the gold standard treatment for high-risk patients, the Bacillus calmet guérin or BCG, is in a worldwide shortage as a result of contaminations and a discontinuation of manufacturing. Some cohorts of patients are linked with the term unmet clinical need, left with no real ethical treatment. So, similar to some other cancers, bladder cancer may be categorized into non-muscle invasive bladder cancer and muscle invasive bladder cancer. Non-muscle invasive bladder cancer, NMIBC, was erroneously called superficial until a few years ago and is generally considered a quasi-chronic disease as recurrence rates are incredibly high. Muscle invasive bladder cancer, on the other hand, is a cancer that has infiltrated into the submucosal layer and the detrusor of the muscle layer where blood vessels are found, therefore progression, metastases, and lymph involvement are of major concern. When treating NMIBC, clinicians would prefer administering a local treatment by instilling a drug into the bladder directly, transurethrally, why reach the blood and cause systemic side effects if the effect we want is local and is not absolutely necessary. So, chemotherapy has been in widespread use to treat bladder cancer since the 1970s, but still its clinical results were not as good as the ones achieved with BCG. BCG has a local effect, which is by the way not a fully understood pathway, but its side effects are systemic. Therefore, there was and still is need to find ways to potentiate chemotherapy. There are many factors which govern intravisical chemotherapy installations. For example, the concentration of the drug, its dose, the diffusion rate, which is very slow and is boosted, the flow rates of the drug if it is irrigated, the drugs themselves are not readily activated and need to obtain activation energy, and the fact that the cytotoxic drugs like our chemotherapy here rely on direct contact with malignant tissue to make their effect. What if there were new pathways for chemotherapy we have not discovered yet? What if we had a minimally invasive physical method of potentiating the drug only once they reach the bladder? For example, by electrically charging the drug molecules and have them trapped, so to speak, in the bladder walls with only negligible systemic uptake. Suppose we found out that with certain local frequencies we perhaps could micropore the membranes of cancer cells and by so applying the drug selectively into them, Imagine a discovery by which, applying certain methods, we also harness the body's immune response as well. Our review discusses all these recent findings and more. I hope you enjoy reading it as much as we enjoyed writing it. Thank you very much for watching.